$465 million opioid verdict overturned by the Oklahoma Supreme Court. I'm told Attorney James Worth, we're talking about a decision from the Oklahoma Supreme Court that just dropped moments ago related to the opioid crisis in the state of Oklahoma's lawsuits to go over opi- or to go after opioid manufacturers uh, for the damages that they've caused through the marketing of those products. All right, so this goes back a little while uh, where the state of Oklahoma in 2017 filed suit against three different manufacturers of opioids that uh, marketed those in the state of Oklahoma. And it was Johnson & Johnson, Purdue, and Teva. And two of those companies ultimately ended up settling uh, with uh, uh, Purdue offering to pay $270 million uh, to the state of Oklahoma and uh, Teva offering to pay $85 million. Those cases were then subsequently dismissed, but Johnson & Johnson did not settle. That case went forward actually to a bench trial. And the theory, the theory that the state of Oklahoma was pushing was that it was a public nuisance uh, the way that the companies were um, marketing these. It says the ledge the companies deceptively marketed opioids in Oklahoma that was creating a public nuisance through false, misleading, and dangerous marketing campaigns. And the state had an abatement plan for funding um, various types of uh, services to help people get off opioids and whatnot. And they wanted the uh, pharmaceutical manufacturers to pay for that as an abatement of this public nuisance. However, nuisance law had never been a used for anything like this. And uh, I certainly had some concerns with the way that it was being used and I believe abused um, in a case like this. Um, although obviously there are serious issues with the opioid crisis and uh, issues with the way it may have been uh, marketed and distributed in Oklahoma and throughout the country. And Oklahoma was actually one of the first states to pursue this. Other states, I think, followed suit. I think, I believe some of the tribes in Oklahoma did as well. But this case ultimately went to trial, and the judge, it was a bench trial, the judge found that it was a public nuisance and ultimately granted the state's request for an abatement or the cost of what it would say the abatement would cost for one year, which amounted to $465 million. Johnson & Johnson appealed. This went to the Oklahoma Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court has reversed it. And um, ultimately, um, in after the appeal, the state of Oklahoma made a cross-claim in that appeal requesting that the abatement be for 20 years or some $9.3 billion instead of just the $465 billion. But I want to note some of the quotes um, from the opinion of the Oklahoma Supreme Court um, reversing this. Basically says, this court has not extended the public nuisance statute to manufacturing, marketing, and selling of products, and we reject the state's invitation to expand Oklahoma's public nuisance law. So it's an acknowledgement that this has never been done before, that Oklahoma um, public nuisance law it was not made for this, has never been utilized in this way. And the court noted in um, making that decision also that the way the damages were determined in this case uh, were not consistent with what you'd expect for a public nuisance. If it were a public nuisance, divided among multiple different manufacturers, you would expect that the damages ordered by Johnson & Johnson would be based on their percentage of market share, their percent that they're contributing to opioids in Oklahoma. And because there's settlement in the two other uh, lawsuits against other manufacturers, you would expect that amount to be offset by the amount they're receiving from the other companies. Neither of those things occurred, which was just um, information that the court put in here, which indicated indicates that it was not really treating this um, as a public nuisance either by the way the damages were determined, although they were determining it based on abatement and the cost of abatement with this plan the state has to try to get um, into the opioid crisis in Oklahoma. But it did not distribute it, um, it pro rata based on the uh, sales by the different manufacturers and did not offset for the other settlements. Uh, so finally, I want to go into kind of the conclusion the court came up with. Uh, it's got a little bit more detail. Um, says, this case challenges us to rethink traditional notion, uh, notions of liability and causation. Tort law is ever-changing. It reflects the complexity and vitality of daily life. The state presented us with a novel theory, public nuisance liability for marketing and selling of a legal product based on the acts not of one manufacturer, but an industry. However, we are unconvinced that such actions amount to a public nuisance under Oklahoma law. The court has allowed public nuisance claim to address discrete localized problems, not policy problems. Erasing the traditional limits on nuisance liability leaves Oklahomans, um, Oklahoma's nuisance statute impermissibly, impermissibly vague. The district court's expansion of public nuisance law allows courts to manage public policy matters that should be dealt with by the legislature and executive branches. The branches are more capable than courts to balance the competing interests at play in societal problems. 
Further, the district court stepping into the shoes of the legislature by creating and funding government programs designed to address social and health issues goes too far. Too far. The court defers the policymaking to the legislative and executive branches and rejects the unprecedented expansion of public nuisance law. The district court erred in finding Johnson & Johnson's conduct created a public nuisance, and the case is reversed, essentially noting that Public nuisance cannot be utilized in this way. So this is a fatal decision um, in these claims. It's not a reduction in the amount uh, that is owed or in the way that that was calculated. It says it is improper to use public nuisance law at all in this way. So uh, there's no liability to Johnson & Johnson here based on this case. Uh, so that's brand new coming out today. Um, it is a published decision, so it will be available online. It's a uh, 2021 OK54. Because it is so new, it's not yet available online on OSCN, but it will be shortly. If you've got any questions about this, case or other appellate cases, you're going to want to talk to an attorney about that privately, confidentially to get that scheduled with somebody at my office. You can go online to makelaweasy.com.